Welcome to a brand new world. A world where the Earth doesn't spin. Where every night is six months long. While here in Miami, we're being blanketed by snow again today. And every day is six months too. And the planet is scorched by a relentless sun. Today's solar radiation index is extremely high. It's a world where cities have been swallowed by the sea, and others have been all but deserted, the air too thin to breathe. It's a world where we face a desperate future, struggling to survive in an alien landscape. This is the story of what could happen if the planet suddenly stopped spinning. And how on earth changing one thing changes everything. It's a fundamental fact. Planets spin. Our solar system was born four and a half billion years ago from a spinning cloud of gas and dust. As they formed, the planets borrowed some of that early spin. And they've kept most of it to this day. At our equator, the Earth is turning at more than 1,600 kilometers an hour. The Earth is gradually slowing down, about two seconds every 100,000 years. But today, that slowdown is going to speed up. It will take five years, and by the end, the Earth will have stopped spinning completely. What would happen to our oceans? Our continents? The air we breathe? What would happen to us? On day one, the change in the speed of our rotation is practically unnoticeable, less than a kilometer an hour, but the results are dramatic. At Miami International Airport, the first sign of trouble. Miami Tower, American 553 just turned on final. Most commercial aircraft navigate with the help of GPS. GPS relies on a series of satellites which tell an aircraft where it is. The ground bases the satellites communicate with are not where the satellites assume they'll be. GPS doesn't expect the Earth's spin to change so dramatically. The slowing Earth wrecks the carefully calibrated system. The effects are catastrophic. American 721, aborting approach. Repeat, aborting. Computers direct planes to land far from airports. Hundreds of thousands of lives are at risk as planes around the world suddenly discover their navigation systems don't work. Scientists have confirmed an erratic reduction in the Earth's rotation. Some are even suggesting it will stop spinning in as little as five years. If it does, the results will be disastrous. Scientists are predicting no country will be spared. In the first week, the problems mount in cities across the globe. The days are getting steadily longer, each one different from the one before. Seconds and minutes will soon become hours and days. The $36 trillion world stock market is in freefall today. Uncertainty about what will happen has shattered investor confidence. 
What will happen to a 24-hour-a-day world if it's longer than 24 hours? After two weeks, the world's spin has slowed by nearly 15 kilometers an hour. And the chain reaction gains speed. Commercial aviation has been reduced to essential services only, with a record 470 accidents worldwide. Time is the first problem on an Earth that is slowly losing its spin. But after two weeks, there's a new, even more critical problem. The oceans. Our planet bulges. It's fatter in the middle than at the poles. Our spin is one of the forces that keeps the water in place on top of the equator. But as that force weakens, the oceans begin to move. Seas start flowing away from the bulging equator towards the poles. More than a billion cubic kilometers of ocean are on the move. Northern places like the Canadian Arctic are the canary in the coal mine. Three months after the Earth begins to slow down, water creeps over Arctic shores like an overflowing bathtub. Sea levels continue to rise, and the Canadian government has ordered a full-scale evacuation of the Arctic. And there's another dangerous effect on a slowing Earth. As sea levels change, the air we breathe is changing too. Our atmosphere is evenly spread across the planet and it rotates in sync with the Earth. Now, with our spin slowing, the atmosphere follows the oceans flowing towards the poles. Among the first hit are cities in the tropics, including Rio, Mumbai, and Singapore. It's getting increasingly hard to breathe here. Further north, cities at higher elevations are also beginning to struggle. In the United States, People climbing in Colorado experience the effect dramatically. Altitudes of 1,500 meters are now like breathing at 4,500. Humans get altitude sickness at less than 2,500 meters. Just over 5,000 meters is the outer limit of survival. The world is changing quickly, and the worst is yet to come. Four months have passed since the Earth started losing its spin. We're now spinning more than 225 kilometers an hour slower than we used to. Each day is almost 28 hours long, meaning two more hours of daylight and two more of darkness. Slipping time has thrown our world, the oceans and the atmosphere into chaos. Officials in Russia report that that country's vast oil fields are now underwater, leaving that country with a fuel emergency just as winter approaches. In most of the United States, 
Flooding and thin air are not yet taking lives. People are coping. But suddenly, all over the world, there's a new, deadly problem. Earthquakes occur where there have never been earthquakes before. The Earth has three layers, a molten core, a solid insulating mantle, and a hard outer crust. They all rotate together. But as our spin decreases, each layer slows at a different speed, unleashing massive friction. The Earth is literally ripping itself apart from the inside out. The waters off San Francisco are an area prone to earthquakes. But now oceanographers here see evidence of seismic activity that they've never seen before. Deep cracks in the ocean floor release intense heat. Dead fish killed by the blast float to the surface. Volcanic activity in and around Chicago has shut down several major arteries. Experts are advising that anyone who can stay home today should do so. The slowing Earth has brought catastrophic geological disasters. The moving oceans are just as wild. Less centrifugal force means the oceans continue to flow from the bulging equator, steadily advancing to the poles. The ocean in the Arctic was once more than 4,500 meters deep. Now, it's more than 13,000. All that water has come from oceans to the south, and shallow areas, like the English Channel, dry out as waters drain to the poles. For the only time in recorded history, Britain is part of mainland Europe, and Ireland is connected to England. You can now walk from London to Paris, And it's not just Europe. Miami's famous beaches are now inland as the oceans surge to the poles. Cuba and Florida are connected by land, and Mexico is about a third bigger than it was. It's not only water that's on the move. As the Earth's rotation weakens, the atmosphere is now starting to settle towards the top and bottom thirds of the globe. These are the only places people can breathe. New York. London. Toronto are all safe. But Mexico City and other major urban areas to the south are now doomed. Their air too thin to breathe. In the United States, Denver is called the Mile High City. As the atmosphere thins, it now feels like it's almost five kilometers high, with an air pressure that's like breathing more than halfway up Everest. Experts believe that air will remain breathable in lower elevation states such as Kansas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. Water is flooding in from the north, and air is thinning from the south. But a few small pockets of habitable land still exist in the middle of North America. These areas are not expected to flood. They are calling this the habitable zone. Staying in Denver is a death sentence. Come on, guys, let's go. For the young and old, 
The effects are already critical. Soon, the air will be lethal for everyone. The U.S. government advises that up to 25 million people in parts of the Southwest should evacuate. The slowing rotation of Earth unleashes deadly friction between the Earth's outer layers and the inner molten core. Volcanoes and earthquakes have destroyed routes by road and rail. Major highways across the country are closed, and those traveling by car are warned that there are no safe routes. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and violence are reported across the states, and those who must travel are advised that the government can offer little by way of help. Those making the treacherous journey into the livable middle of the United States witnessed the geological upheaval caused by the slowing Earth. While earthquakes devastate the Midwest, retreating oceans leave major coastal cities high and dry. New York, Boston, Halifax are far inland. Australia has formed a new continent with Indonesia. And Asia's shallow coast is no longer a coast at all. In just four months, Hong Kong and other major ports are dry. Shipping has come to a standstill all around the world. Others are discovering the slowing Earth has a new danger. Death by solar radiation. An invisible electric field called the magnetosphere normally protects the Earth. The field is maintained by our planet's spin. The rapid rotation of the Earth's iron core generates it. The magnetosphere deflects blasts of solar radiation. But as our spin slows, the magnetic field is weakening, and our protective shield is breaking down. Tropical places like Miami are in no danger of flooding. The city sits on the Atlantic's continental shelf. Now dozens of kilometers of that shelf are exposed, and Miami is landlocked. And here, the air is still breathable, but the sun is deadly. Today's solar radiation index is eight, or extremely high. People outside are reminded to completely cover up and limit exposure to 15 minutes. And remember, sunscreen does not protect against the risk. It's been just over a year since our rotation began to slow. We're now spinning over 340 kilometers an hour less than we used to. The face of the planet continues to change. The waters of the Earth are still moving. And a year since it became possible to walk from England to France, it will never be possible again. At first, the shallow areas around mainland Europe drained as the North Atlantic Ocean converged on the pole. But now, as the polar sea swells, the United Kingdom and much of Europe are swallowed by a new ocean.
London is gone. Berlin, gone. Moscow, gone. Historical cities of Northern Europe, all at the bottom of a new sea. In North America, survivors who have been able to make the trip begin to arrive in Kansas. A college campus has been commandeered. Scientists are working to create a refuge in what they think is the safest place in the United States. No flooding, lots of air, minimal earthquakes. But they face an enormous struggle. There's no food being delivered in this shattered world. Roads are all but impassable. What food they eat, they'll have to grow here. It's a disaster on a scale we've never had to deal with. The survivors who have made it here are on their own. It will be a struggle, and they are the lucky ones. It's taken just two and a half years, but now the spin of the Earth is just 320 kilometers an hour, more than 1,200 kilometers an hour slower than it once was. Entire countries are underwater. In others, the air is too thin to breathe. Survivors face another devastating consequence of the slowdown. All over the world, people struggle to get enough sleep. Each day is now more than two and a half days long. Each night is too. Humans are not programmed to sleep in a world that's light for more than 60 hours straight. People who live in cities that aren't flooded, where the air is still breathable, struggle with this lack of sleep. People suffer from blurred vision and lack of muscle control. Hey, you okay? It's a breakdown commonly faced by astronauts, submariners, and Arctic explorers. Their brains are numb with fatigue, and our world is almost too strange to comprehend. The slowing Earth has a devastating effect on animals, too. The migration of most mammals is triggered by the changing length of day. Now the day is getting longer, not shorter. Some migratory birds die as they fail to fly south, and then are frozen as long periods of cold night close in. Other species face the same fate, caribou. Monarch butterflies, zebras, all doomed to extinction on a slowing earth. As the oceans move to the poles, a new mega continent is forming at the earth's middle latitudes. A group of oceanographers in San Francisco is determined to make their way there. These survivors want to start afresh on what used to be the seafloor. It holds more hope for life than staying in a big city. 
It's a desperate decision. But on this radically altered planet, there are few good choices. In two and a half years, a gradually slowing world has been completely transformed. And the worst is yet to come. Four years have passed since the Earth's rotation started to slow. We're spinning at just over 60 kilometers an hour. The sun now stays in the sky for 13 days, followed by 13 days of night. The old concept of four seasons is gone. The climate is now defined by a cycle of bright and hot, or dark and cold. In the long nights, the temperatures can plummet to minus 55 degrees Celsius. Humans struggle to adapt. Most species of animals cannot. Even if they survived the floods and found air to breathe, they are now destroyed by the bitter cold. Animals that hibernate stand a better chance of survival. They're used to going without food for long periods. But their future remains uncertain, as their habitats are either flooded or airless. Plants are another casualty. Vital food crops like corn and wheat need lots of sunlight to grow. Temperate rainforests freeze and never recover. Only the boreal forests of Canada and the northern United States are hardy enough to survive the cold and darkness, except they are now underwater. North American cities are now swallowed as the Atlantic and Pacific converge. Toronto, Halifax, Boston. Millions more people in the US and Canada are dead. New York, too, is being engulfed by the new ocean. But the water here is just 100 meters deep. Its skyscrapers only semi-submerged. Chicago, one of the southernmost cities on the Great Lakes, is finally swallowed by the sea. Those who have stayed now leave in panic as seawater begins flooding subways and courses through city sewers. Soon, the entire city will be completely submerged. In a world where the massive oceans continue to move, there aren't many safe places left. Lethally thin air has made nearly all of Africa, Australia, and South America almost uninhabitable. Near the equator, the air is like being at 10,000 meters, higher than being at the summit of Mount Everest. Enormous cities lie devastated and empty. But an equatorial continent is rising from where the ocean once was. And there are a few places in this new mega continent where the air is dense enough to breathe. A ship carrying a group of young explorers is making its way west to start a new human colony on what was once the ocean floor. Their journey is treacherous. GPS doesn't work on a slowing earth. Even charts are unreliable as the ocean changes shape all around them.
But in this savage, changing world, the weather is increasingly unpredictable. The rotation of the Earth creates constant patterns of east-moving winds in the northern hemisphere and west-moving winds in the southern. This is called the Coriolis effect. As that spin slows, those predictable wind patterns become unstable. New high-pressure systems form and tear across the planet. Ocean storms are rampant and wild. They can last for weeks at a time. Weather around the world is changing. 13 days of darkness and waves of freezing cold around the planet. While here in Miami, we're being blanketed by snow again today as another nighttime storm whips across the country. The blizzard is expected to last another 12 days until the sun comes up. Places like Miami are not equipped for brutal winter weather. Many houses have no heat, another crippling blow to cities already struggling to endure. And life all around the globe is going to get harder still. It's been four and a half years since the rotation of the Earth began to slow down. It used to turn about 1,600 kilometers an hour. Now it's barely turning at all. The sun stays in the sky for 16 days straight. As the rotation slowed, the oceans of the world flowed towards the poles. Two new oceans have taken shape. Kansas is now right on the coast of the new mighty Northern Sea. This sea is 16 kilometers deep. About 800,000 square kilometers of the United States is now inhabitable, less than a tenth of its former landmass. Settlers have created a habitat for growing food and staying sheltered from the increasingly harsh climate of extreme hot and extreme cold. The new oceans offer the best chance of food. The flooding of continents has made them nutrient rich, meaning a lot of food for fish. Warm water species died as coastal ecosystems were destroyed, either dried up or flooded when the oceans moved. But many cold water species, such as cod, mackerel, and tuna, survive. Men and women who once farmed now fish where a new ocean meets the Midwestern plains. In the long, cold nights, refugees work in teams, catching fish from the freezing ocean. They take them back to the habitat, they risk their lives in minus 55 degree cold that the body can endure for just a few minutes. Fishing through the ice is not offering enough food for an increasing number of North American refugees. Time is running out. 
As the spinning of the Earth slows, the blinding snow finally stops. The Coriolis effect caused by spin controls weather, and it's gone. Now, storms are increasingly predictable. Reduced spin produces a more stable weather pattern. But there are still wild temperature swings between the hot days and cold nights. And this stable weather means less precipitation. Rain mostly falls far out on the oceans, without wind to blow storms inland. The occasional daytime rain that does come to the Kansas habitat is stored for the long periods of drought. The situation here is desperate. At sea, the oceanographers who set sail from San Francisco are now shipwrecked on the mega continent. They scour the ocean floor for whatever they can find to survive. Their choice to live far out in what used to be the sea is risky. Unlike those in Kansas, they only have the resources they brought with them and what they can salvage. But if they succeed, they will have the largest piece of habitable land on the entire planet. Those who have chosen to stay put in non-sunken cities like Miami face the greatest hardship. There's very little to eat. Electricity is unreliable. Clean water is hard to find. There are no food supplies coming in by land or sea. The comforts of technological life are gone. When the resources left behind are exhausted, Miami will have nothing left to live on. Time is running out. With the end in sight, some survivors decide to leave. They must find a place that is not landlocked like Miami. To survive in this bizarre world, they need to be close to water. And the best place is thousands of kilometers away. The oceans are one of the last sources of animal protein on the planet. Mid-Pacific, a new colony takes root. They set up a small base camp for food and shelter. Wind power is harnessed to generate electricity. The seabed's drying up, and agriculture will soon be possible on the edge of the new northern ocean. But when the darkness comes, the climate stretches human survival to its limit. More than 16 days of freezing temperatures with a bare minimum of shelter on the open mega continent. And when the world stops spinning completely, more deadly change will sweep the earth. Five years after it started slowing down, the Earth stopped spinning completely. The oceans, atmosphere, and climate settle into place. A mega continent encircles the planet's center. Two vast oceans run from the poles to the middle latitudes. 
All land at the middle is lethally airless. More than half of the new continent is uninhabitable. The Earth is not spinning, but it still orbits the Sun. So from now on, it will be light for half of the year and dark for the other half, as the Sun is on the other side of the Earth. The old concept of day and night is dead. From now on, it's an annual pattern. Six months of sunrise and day, six months of sunset and night. The sun casts a withering spotlight on the Earth. Under its glare, temperatures soar to 55 degrees Celsius. Everything in its path is battered by powerful winds. On the edges of the sun's spotlight, the effects are less deadly. On the new megacontinent near Hawaii, it rains in torrents for a month, in the same way that a hurricane creates storms thousands of kilometers away. The rain provides enough water for the rest of the year. Others are not so lucky. Those living in Kansas are thousands of miles north of the sun's blistering path. They now discover in the stable weather of a still earth that it will never rain here again. The settlers cannot even desalinate the oceans for water. With the electricity supply collapsed, there is not enough energy. The world now has one weather pattern, all controlled by the sun. No more winds, no more pressure systems. <coughs> And with the long, dark night, the final blow. The nighttime temperature plummets to minus 55 degrees Celsius, almost 20 degrees colder than the average Arctic winter. The new polar oceans freeze and stay frozen all year round. On a still Earth, those living in Kansas are doomed. The ocean colony in the mid-Pacific is just 1,700 kilometers from the edge of the sun's path. They can fish without having to break through the ice. A year passes. More than six and a half billion people are dead. A few wandering survivors find their way to one of the last places on Earth where people can breathe the air and survive the climate. The cycle of darkness and light, cold and hot, wet and dry, repeats and continues for the rest of time. Suddenly slowing our rotation creates a brand new planet. It will never happen like this, but it reveals the delicate balance that keeps our planet alive. <laughs> <laughs>